I've been more or less a, a watch wearer for, for most of my life. Yeah, you know, when I used to skateboard all the time, the smacking, I, I break watches. And so a, a lot of the watches I would buy were not expensive watches, but I, I've always liked watches, one, as, as just a piece of design as an accessory, but also just for the function. And in more recent years, when everybody's got their face buried in their cell phone, even just to look at the time, I think it's really nice that I can just look at my wrist rather than make people feel like I'm not interested in the conversation with them. When I'm doing my artwork, a lot of times I'm thinking, you know, is this going to be an album cover? Is it going to be a mural? Is it going to be a t-shirt? What works well with with that, you know, canvas? And And so, you know, a really flashy watch wouldn't be my thing, but having something that I think is a beautiful art piece doesn't it doesn't have to be flashy and it can actually connect with the sort of cool industrial utility of the mechanics of the watch as well. First thing I thought of was how do I how do I simplify the mandala so that it lets the movement breathe a little bit more. My idea was the mandala will be kind of like a stencil where you're seeing through the negative spaces to the movement and you've got two circular uh, elements that, you know, the face of the watch and, and you've got your mechanism behind that um, and the mandala. So, uh, you know, the way those things would have a, a relationship to each other, I thought could be, could be really beautiful, but I definitely did not want to obscure the movement too much. The idea with a lot of the things I do that I'm going to add something on top of something else. I'm cutting paper, I'm screen printing, I'm stenciling. There's a lot of layering in my work. I felt like it worked nicely with that side of, of my, my fine art. There are a lot of watches that I see where I feel like either the artist um, or whatever the collaborator is, whether they're an artist or an athlete or whoever, whatever they have added to the watch delivers on what people would expect from them, but in other ways compromises what I think is inherently lovely about a watch. And then, you know, there are times where in order not to compromise the watch, the what's added by a collaborator is, is, is so minimal that it's it's in, almost inconsequential. I feel like I was able to strike the right balance between those two zones. And um, I have to say, I'm really, I'm really proud of that. You know, on the, on the first watch, I liked the idea of a, of a, you know, a subtle embedding of a lot of the patterning and textures from my collage into the case of the watch using this translucent material called taxalium um, because a lot of times I don't like, like I was saying, really flashy things and I felt like the way that the light would play off of the case and that you would see depending on different angles, different things, I thought, oh, that'll be, you know, that'll be elegant. And I do think that it, it accomplishes that, but one of the things I realized is a lot of the detail of the collage is lost at that scale. So I needed to go a little bit more bold with the second watch. So that was, I, I think it's fair to say, lesson learned. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that both watches exist because they're utilizing different zones of my work, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way the imagery works with the scale of the watch. A lot of people who collect watches, even though it's a small surface area, it's saying a lot about them. They're not yelling, but they're saying, if you're listening to the whisper, like, tune in, this is meaningful.